this is uh, DecideX, and uh, we are here again, and we've got a uh, guest, Henry Howie. I'm fine. I'm yes. fine. Frank. Thanks for coming. Uh, this is DecideX. Welcome to the DecideX. It's uh, an, an exclusive internship uh, live uh, show, and um, we are basically focusing on startups, and uh, we know you're doing a lot of things with, uh, with, uh, with, uh, with, uh, with the community. And I think we invited you to just come and run for me. We ask you a few questions. How did you start? How did you manage some of the few things? So the topic of today is uh, rethinking equity, company valuation, and strategic partnerships as the way forward for the startups. So there's a way we have so many startups around, but as they start, few of them have mastered <laughs> The, the, the art of understanding equity, shareholding, and few of them also understand strategic partnerships. So, and, and few of them also know how to value their company. And this has become an embargo. And we don't want them to run this hard way. So we can start uh, using this show and then we teach them some few things to consider in the first place. So welcome to the show. And um, tell us a little bit about your, your company, Ared. Uh, thanks, Frank. Uh, so briefly, uh, Ared is a technology company for social good. So what we do is we, we build smart distribution uh, channel in rural areas, semi-urban area, including connectivity solution, offline, online connectivity solution. And uh, we're currently here in Uganda, and we started our expansion uh, this year and more next year will be in three more countries. That's good. And, and how old is the company? Five years. Five years. So, um, and you're an SM, right? Yeah, you know, I'm not big into labels, <laughs> uh, but uh, uh, SME, I mean, I like, I like the, the, the culture of SME. Yes. Uh, I don't like the corporate culture, so uh, I, I'm hoping to stay in SME for, for a long time. At least I look at SME as the size of your team. That's what I look at not necessarily as revenue, so it depends how you look at things. Well, uh, so uh, uh, we, we've got so many startups in the country, and because of the uh, system, the, the environment, the infrastructure of the business, uh, there's a way so many young men are starting companies, but uh, there are a couple of things they are not really considering, sometimes not because they are ignoring them, but because they don't know them. So then they come to run them, you know, when it's too late, sometimes when they're exhausted, sometimes when they're about to give up. And um, so for you, if you had a chance to come back and start, what are a few things that you've realized are so special to start with as a startup? Well, I, now keep in mind, I've been in business for 20 years. So, uh, 20 years. 20 years, so it's, it's not my first uh, rodeo, but it's my first business um, in Rwanda. Most of my business was outside Rwanda. Um, but if I, would, if I would do differently, you know, it, it depends what type of business you're trying to do. So build. let's talk about uh, social enterprise and also, you know, profit-making company, but in terms of uh, 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 enterprise. Yes. Yeah, yeah, enterprise. Not so, shopping, not trading. Yes, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so first of all, you have to have a vision, right? You have to know where you're trying to go as a business. Uh, because when you know where you're going, then you can work your way backwards to know what kind of structure That's you true. can build. Uh, if you're trying to build a big business in Africa, mm. not just in Rwanda, you have to think partnership. Because if you're going to try to set up shop, you know, in all those different countries yourself, it's going to be too expensive. You're going to have That's to true. keep raising money all the time. So what, what would I have done it differently? Uh, I would say I would have started looking for money early on from the beginning. Because that's uh, chasing, I mean, looking for funding is as hard as building your business. That's and um, it's, another, it's another way, it's a different business uh, on its own. The second thing I would have done differently is I would have looked for a CFO uh, to, to, to handle, not just handle the financial, but will be in charge of developing the financial projections, the business plan. It's much easier to build a business with a partner in the business than that's do it on your own. Oh, that, that's a good point. You, it's, it's much better to run a company with a pattern, right? Absolutely. 
So let's come back to the, to the as the topic says that uh, rethinking equity, company valuation, and strategic partnerships as a way forward for a startup. Uh, so you said uh, it's better to start with a partner in the business than going alone. And uh, let me ask you this, uh, who should be your partner? What are the criteria to, you know, based on when selecting, a, you know, somebody, you have a vision, you have an idea, you want to start a company, you want to register, and then you're looking for somebody to, uh, you know, call your partner, your shareholder. Yeah. So uh, what are the few things to consider? Because sometimes also, these young men, they will choose somebody they love, somebody they like, and, and, and they forget that uh, business is uh, way different from that. So what are the few uh, technical, you know, criteria somebody has to consider while selecting uh, a business partner? Well, that's a, that's a tough question. Um, I, I, the first thing is you need to find somebody that has the strength where you have your weakness, number one. That's a good point. You know, that's the first thing. You don't look for somebody who has the same strength as you. Then you need to find somebody who balances your, 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 the team. Your, you know, because if you're very uh, strong in business, mm. not really in financial booking and all, you find somebody in financial booking. If you're very strong in, in, in financial booking, if it's a technical business or technology company, you're not good in technology, you find a technology partner. The second thing is you, you have to be aligned with the vision with your partner. That's true. And, and the last thing I would say is trust. You have to be able to trust that person. Uh, because, you know, and, and it's been said all over the place, partnership is like marriage. That's true. There's going to be up, there's going to be down, there's going to be argument, there's going to be all kinds of different things. But as long as you guys have the same vision, as long as you guys, you know, understand where you guys are going and you, you know how to deal with each other as some, you know, as, as you grow, then that's the best part. But it's tough. It's really tough. It's very tough. So uh, is, it, uh, is it good that uh, before you start that business, before you register, before you, you, know, you kick off on the ground, I think uh, uh, what you talk about, the shareholding agreement documents, yeah, equity, equity documents, uh, you're talking about trust. So does trust mean that uh, because you love each other, you like each other, you've been together for quite a long time, you know each other, does it mean that uh, you don't have to consider all the shareholding agreement documents? You, you can just run your business based on the trust? That's what you mean? Of course not. Uh, documentation, obviously, uh, uh, it's very important. It's not just about trust. It's to make sure that everything is transparent, That's right? True. And it's transparent for whoever comes in after you start the business. They want to see, okay, what's the structure of the company? Who owns what? You know, uh, who does what? Who does what? It, it, it gives them confidence, especially investors. Uh, investors love documents. That's they true. love documentation because it tells them an idea of, you know, that you guys are well organized, well structured. You have a clear vision of where you're going. You have to have your financial projections. You have to have your, as you say, your shareholder agreement. But all those documents can be amended uh, as you grow. Also, yeah, that's true. So. Uh, but between the partner, it should be a straightforward document, nothing too complicated. You know, it should be a, yes, a shareholder agreement, it shouldn't be more than a page. You know, because there's no money yet, right? There, there's no, well, you're always trying to simplify things, at least in the beginning, and you work your way up. If you earn $50,000 that year, you improve your agreement. If you earn 100000 and and so on and so forth. Because like anything, your company is growing you know, organically, your document should be growing organically. organically. Same thing. So now, now let's, um, uh, let's also talk about this. Uh, when, because again, this is something new to the young entrepreneurs, mostly in this, you know, um, uh, sub-Saharan zone, where business has not been uh, our culture. Uh, so some few considerations that are, you know, away from our knowledge, like um, uh, when is the, when do you bring uh, an investor into your business? Uh, you know, when you bring an investor, you know, how do you know that uh, the investment, you know, the guy is bringing is worthy the equity you're giving? How do you crack that balance? You know, the biggest... And I think that goes with the company valuation. Exactly, and that's what I want to talk about. And that's not just a random problem. That's an African problem, right? That's true. And I want to talk to all the startups out there. Um, the biggest 
a problem or challenge that startup don't do from the beginning is to learn how to uh, have valuation of your company, how to build valuation, how valuation are calculated. There is a formula. So usually, in general, valuation is based on your revenue, especially net revenue. But in technology company, it's different. Mm -hmm. Technology company, you can sell valuation based on future earnings or the really? size of the market. Really? Yes, that's Predictions. The Prediction. I mean, you have companies that are worth billions of dollars and are still not profitable. Uber. Facebook didn't become yeah, profitable true. for a long time. Amazon didn't become profitable for Twitter 15 years. as well. All of them, but they're worth billions of dollars. Why? How do they, vary, you know, calculate that? It's a game. It, you know, it's a game that us African needs to learn this game also. Um, because, again, it's, it's about projection. It's about how you sell. You know, everything is about selling. Business is about selling. Salesmanship is key. You have to sell your vision. You have to sell the technology. And you have to... Innovation, it's new. Technically, when you build something innovative, it means you, you, you're bringing something that's going to disrupt the market. So all you can do is build so on base of What are three things that compose the equation of company valuation calculation? Well, they, it's a, there's different calculation. Mm -hmm. You know, the size of the market is, the potential size of the market mm -hmm. could be one of them. Mm -hmm. um, how disruptive your technology is, mm -hmm. can be, meaning do you have competitor? Mm -hmm. So the least competitor you have, the more edgy you can become. Mm -hmm. And how quickly you're acquiring um, the, 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 the numbers. The numbers of people using your technology. So you don't even need to focus on revenue. If you have a huge amount of people using your technology, even if you're making zero dollars, that has a value. Because that, that consumer, even though is not spending money now, could be spending money tomorrow. So that means the formula of company valuation can be customized in a way. Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, you customize the way, and, and there's people that are expert in that. And you see those companies bring those experts to, to, to jump up the number. But another thing about valuation that startups need to understand is it doesn't matter what you think your valuation is. Somebody has to accept that valuation to make wow. it a real valuation. Wow. So if, 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 you, if you think you value at $1 million, right, mm -hmm. and an investor come and say, well, no, I don't think so. I think it's 500000 It's up to you to decide. Am I willing to lower my valuation so I can get this money? That's true. You know, or you can be patient and keep building your business until you get the valuation you want. And valuation, as I said, only work when the other party, the one giving you money, accepts, accepts. that valuation. So you've got so to whatever convince. Whatever you believe does not mean anything. As long as he believes. Exactly. Well, uh, now let's come back to the equity. Uh, you know, let, let's be local here. Let's yeah. be domestic. Like uh, an investor comes in Rwanda, maybe next startup based in X zone of Kigari, and, uh, and an investor comes in and uh, says, uh, young man, I'm giving you uh, 10 million. I want 50% uh, of your business. W because sometimes these young men, they have never touched 10, 10 million. Um, so they may give 50%, thinking 10 million is a lot. Mm -hmm. So talk about that as well. So the, the general rules, of, of equity is as a, let's let's take a, a company that's going to scale up and all. Mm -hmm. The general rule is you're going to raise at least three, two to three times in the lifetime of your business. General on average. Uh, the problem is we look at money instead of looking at the bigger picture. We look a lot of uh, uh, entrepreneur in Africa short term uh, vision. They see the money, they think this is it. That's all I'm going to need anyway. You know, 10,000, it seems a lot to them, right? That's true. Uh, 10 million, sorry, it seems a lot to them. But they don't understand that, especially if you're in technology, you have to develop the technology if you need to, you have uh, employment. Innovation takes time. On average, innovation takes five to 10 years wow. to crack the code, uh, you know, to, to bring adoption. Because it's not just about the product, which is another them. mistake people make. That's true. They think, oh, I got this product, it's new. Boom, everybody's going to adopt that product. It's not true. You know, you have people that have developed already habits. Sometimes it takes a whole generation, a That's new true. generation, That's to true. come in to adopt your product. So you always have to play the long-term game. And, and the rule of thumb is always protect, you know, your equity as long and as much as you can. That should be your goal. 
you know, and you've got to protect it. You have to protect your equity. This is your baby, you know. This is this, this is your lifetime, you know. Wow. And the longer you wait, the more you have proven on the market, the more valuation you can you can have, the less equity you give. You know, you shouldn't rush. But sometimes, you know, it it it's it's attractive. You know, you have 10 million. You know, you think, oh my God, I've made it. And, and you're you starving. Up. Yeah, and you're starving. You, you have no money in the pocket. And that's why it's tough. It's really wow. tough. Wow. Interesting. So we, we, we are going to have, uh, a, you know, a one minute break. And then we'll come back, uh, you know, and then concentrate on the, how do you establish strategic partnerships as a startup? Is it possible that uh, you can start a company in January and in December you already have established network of partners? And how is that possible? No so, uh, yes. So let's go in the break. Yes. All right, no problem. Yeah. We are going to focus on the establishing strategic partnerships as a startup. So there is a, a belief that uh, you have to scale up as a startup after so many years. You have to suffer, you have to starve. Like, is it really a must? Or there is a way, there is a soft way somebody can learn. And then you, uh, you, know, you establish that package. And then when you really, you know, practice that in just one year or whatever time, you know, length, you really, uh, you are on the top. You have partners, you have, you know, uh, uh, you've got uh, clients, like you're really booming in just one year or even less or even, you know, around there. So let's, let's see how strategic, strategic partnerships can, you know, uh, support, can, can influence that possibility. Yeah, I mean, first of all, as an entrepreneur, you should remove this idea of I'm going to boom in a year. Yeah, even if it happened, which it will not happen most likely, uh, you, you should take it out of your brain. You should like, delete that. You know, you should tell yourself, it's going to take me 10 years. When mm -hmm. I came back here to do my business, I gave myself 10 years. 10 years to do this business. 10 Period. years. 10 years. Not one, not five, but 10. But as we, 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 we open shop in Uganda, I've learned a lot about the challenges of scaling up. Now, scaling up, it's, it's, it's optional. Uh, but if you're going to take money, uh, investor money and all, you're going to have to scale up. That's true. Because if, if, if an investor, you know, invest in you, they invest in you based on your projection, then you need to come up with those, uh, you need to have a plan that how you're going to reach those projections. We know all that in Rwanda is a small market, so most companies have to expand outside. So now, Henry, let's now be practical a little bit. Let's, let's imagine... You are a, a tech startup. Yes. Into technology, and you are based in Rwanda, and you are 20 years. Maybe you are a university student or yeah. graduate. So let's play that movie. How can you, uh, you know, wake up in the morning, you know, and hustle, go to RDB, register. Uh, you know, how can you just in two minutes tell me how can you hustle, and then you really? I'll tell you in, in less than that. Uh, right? I'm young. Put RDB on the back first. Mm -hmm. I have an idea. Number one thing you need to do is find out if somebody else has that idea. That's the first thing you need to do. So you need to spend time online. I will give myself 30 days or 60 days, check online if this idea already exists, okay? Because it's very expensive. Already exists in the country or on the global market? In the global market. You know, you don't need to look Can for Can the global it. existence affect your, your, your of local? Of course. 
uh, of course, because if that company decides to come to your market, has more resources, has more money than you, you're dead in the water. And I've seen it happen in the solar business a lot of times. So instead of trying to compete with the big guys, and you see that a technology already exists, set up a partnership. Because companies, whether they come from outside in or from here trying to expand, they always prefer working with a local partner than trying to set up shop and build the whole infrastructure. That's right. So that's the first thing, because there's so much innovation now in the market. I've yet to, you know, it's very difficult to come up with something really, really unique. That's you know, so instead of spending all that money that you, you have, that you have saved for, for, for months or years to start this idea, you know, it'll be much easier to work on an existing idea, all you have to do is adapt it to the local market, it'll yes. cost you much cheaper, and now you can generate money much quicker. Yes. And then when you finish that research, and you decide, okay, there's already a technology out there for me, then you think about registering to RDB, and looking for a partner, and all those things. But if your idea doesn't work, now you have to ask yourself, okay, how am I going to find funding to develop this idea? Now, instead of trying to develop this idea on your own, what you can do also is look for, for companies uh, that are in that space. Again, not just locally. We live in a global market. I tell the youth all the time, stop thinking local. You know, it's going to kill you. You told me that already. Yeah, I, I know. I told you that plenty of times. <laughs> stop thinking local. You know, the world is big. You have the internet. You have the world, uh, you know, right next to you. You're right. So look all over the world. You know, there's always somebody out there that want to expand their market. That's always. True. There's always a company that would love to be in a new market. That's they true. just need that, that, that partner or that guy that know the local uh, ecosystem, that understand how things move here, and they're willing to partner. Now, your negotiation skills has to be there also. That's true. And then the last thing is, as, as we just spoke about, I'll look for a partner. Um, what, what are a few mistakes that, uh, you know, young men can make in the negotiation room? Uh, a lot of mistakes, they may have, I've seen it all the time, they, they have the idea, they don't do research, they don't find out if that idea is already there. They think their idea is the best idea ever, and then they go to spend money trying to develop this idea. And then a lot of time they run out of money before the idea is even a, a reality. By the way, is quitting a business directly proportion to the, you know, uh, getting out, you know, running out of cash? Well, no, I mean, qu when you quit a business, uh, uh, you know, it, it depends what your definition of quitting. You can pause the business for a few months until you look for money and all. I've done it plenty of times where you slow down uh, the business. My, my previous business, I used to, it, it used to be the first two years was a roller coaster. So every time I was low on cash, I go get a job. Oh, really? For six months. <laughs> yeah. I used to go get a job for six months. Save, 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 save. <laughs> Boom. Go back to the business. So, <laughs> <laughs> oh, I used to do the job and do the business at night. Wow. I mean, but I was in logistics, so it was, it was doable. But that was in USA? Yeah, in the US, yeah, yeah. So how many years did you spend in USA? 17 years. 17 years doing yeah. business in USA? Well, not 17 years doing business. 17, I, I did business in the US around 14, 15 years. By the way, as we come to the conclusion, uh, sometimes we, uh, we speak all these sophisticated things and then... Uh, that there is no, you know, uh, uh, you know, inspiration. You know, Arid is a very established company so far, and uh, it's really going virally. You no, know, into all of the thirty districts, I think, and you see, you are also going to Uganda, and uh, you know, it's very rare to find a local company scaling up like that. So, and you've won a lot of awards. You've, you've raised a lot of money from the West. And uh, it, it's, a, it's a huge thing. But Henry, what, what, what is that time in your business, in a startup stage, when you're still young into business, that you went to your bed and you cried and you were like, can I quit this? What, what's that crying moment, sorry? I mean, uh, uh, for, for the young man or for me? Because I've cried too, so. Yeah, yeah for you. Oh, for when, me. When did you cry? Like, when did you feel like, I'm going to leave this business? Yeah, I mean. When was it really too much, like? Even, to, even today, I still have those moments where it's too much stress and Tell problem and all. I mean, I, I, the, the, the story I like to share is, um, again, my previous business, not this one. Because, you know, business is about mindset. Eh? If you have a tough mind, you can deal with much more stress. But back then, I was, I was still young in the, in the game. And, um, I, 
you know, like I said, it took me two years to, to make money on my previous business. When I say make money, be profitable. Uh, make more money than you spend. That's, that's, that's the key. Um, and every time uh, I was down... When do you achieve that? Like, when do you start, uh, when do you go on the level of making more money than you spend? Can, you, can we count it in how many? You can do that in one year, like, like average. You can't count because it depends on the business you are. Like I said, innovation takes much longer time. So innovation can take like how many years? Average. I, I, I'll give you an example. Amazon take them uh, over 10 years to, to be profitable. You know, 10 years. I mean, so 10 years you have to have money to spend. Because again, innovation is about new ideas, That's right? True. You bring something new to the market. So you have you no got financial backup. Exactly. Because until you and that's why the, the, the strength of the West compared to us Africans, because us, we don't spend on innovation. They have a lot of support on innovation. They have grants, they have government grants and all. We don't have those things yet. Or if we have very small scale. So a lot of time they tell you go get a loan or, or use your own money to, to build innovation. It's the, it's the worst idea you can do. You know, because innovation is not just about the idea. It's about uh, the customer adopting your new idea. That's true. So you have to convince that customer this idea is better than the last idea you were doing using before. You it's know, a, it's, so it's, that's it's, a lot of work and money. It's a gospel and product. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's yeah. a lot of work and money, you know. So unless you have, you know, government support where they can move stuff quicker and pass a law and say you have to use this, then that's a different story. But most of innovators, they have to build that you know, change mindset themselves. Well, tell us the story. But the story is very simple. I mean, every time in life, uh, in business, you're going to come to what they call crossroad, where you either go left and you quit, and you go right and you continue. And you're puzzled. Exactly. Every, every step of, the, of your life in business, you're going to go through that. And I remember clearly uh, something had happened. I don't know. I was losing. I, uh, one of my truck was broke down. At that time, I had two trucks break down, and you know, a, a big. Those are eighteen wheeler. They, they break down. That's four, five, six thousand dollars you have to spend just to fix it. And I remember getting on my knee and 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 start uh, literally crying and asking myself, man, why me? That's the first thing I used to why say. Why me? Why me? What did I do so wrong <laughs> to deserve this thing? You know? <laughs> why? Why? Why me? And then, and then after that, I, I, I asked myself, I was like, if I stop now, I'll never know if I could have made it. That's true. And that's always been my motivation. If I stop now, I'll never know if tomorrow would have been better. You know, if the day after tomorrow would have made it finally. You know, most people stop right before their success. That's true. And thank God I didn't. You know, but, but that's what kept me pushing. This Again, day. when you came in Rwanda... What's that hardest moment that you had? Oh, I had. But, you know, when you go through so much hard, you know, hardship in the past, uh, new hardship is not really... I, I was already prepared. And that's what I tell the youth all the time. Prepare your mind for hardship. That's true. Then the hardship will not seem so hard on you. Wow. But we prepare, because you have vaccination. Exactly. You're already preparing yourself. It's going to be hard. You know? So your mind is... You know, your mind is a computer. That's true. So whatever you feed your mind is what's going to compute. If you feed your mind, it's going to be easy, and it becomes hard. Your brain is not prepared. That's true. And then you're like, oh, my God. And then it becomes, oh, I, I can't Paralyzed. do this. You're, yeah, <laughs> this is too hard. But if you tell your mind, this is going to be the hardest thing I'm going to do, then your brain is already saying, okay, it's going to be hard. Let me figure out how to, you know, already know if hardship come, what to do. But a lot of young men and women, especially men, they say, oh, in a year, I'm going to be rich. And that's the uh, last thing I want to say is that's ego. True. That's true. In business, you need to put your ego in check. That's, That's what kills a lot of business. Big ego. You know, thinking you have the best idea. There's no such thing as the best idea. It's only best to you. That's but, true. you know, you have to convince the rest of the world that your idea is best. Then you can say it's the best idea. So ego needs to be in check. And prepare your mind for battle. For hardship. Entre entrepreneurship is a battleship. It's a, it's a battleground. You know, it's not a walking apart. It's not a straight line. You have... So many issues. I can't, I can't, I can't, we, I don't think we have time, but... We are running out of time, but yeah. in one minute left, talk about uh, social enterprise, social, yes. social business. Yeah. And then, you know, talk about social business and business. Just a little bit, create more of uh, a difference between them. Yeah, uh, simply, simply, business and social business, the biggest difference is 
you, you're doing a business for social good, for, for having a positive impact. That's the big difference between social enterprise. What keeps, this, what keeps it strong? What is one thing that you have to consider when running a, a social enterprise to make it really sustainable? One thing. Well, sustainability is the number one key for, for social business. But how do you build it? But again, uh, sustainability means that the, the business itself feed, feed itself. Feed right? itself. So you, you have to build a social business as a business that you're going to have revenue that's going to pay uh, and that's going to pay the bills and all your employees and build a little bit of profit. But the, the number one goal for social business is the impact, number one. The second thing is sustainability. And the last thing I do want to say uh, about social business, it's even harder than traditional business. That's true. <laughs> that, that's, that's, our, that, that's what I wanted you to, 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 to talk about. So then we're coming to the end of the, of the show. Uh, give one message to the, to, the, to the young entrepreneurs who are starting up their companies. Yeah, I mean, my message is the same, guys. Um, entrepreneurship is the hardest thing you're going to do. Uh, stop lying to yourself uh, and, and, be, and be careful who you listen to. If somebody's telling you all you need is an idea, they don't know what they're talking about. And always listen to somebody <laughs> who's been in that journey already. Too many times we listen to people that have regular jobs, you know, that working in... And it's true, it's true, there's nothing wrong. If you want to be a doctor, you listen to what? A doctor. If you want to be a teacher, you listen to a teacher. But too many times you want to be an entrepreneur, we listen to the wrong people. So beware who you listen to. Interesting. So thank you so much. And uh, my message to you guys, be a fan, be a follower of Insidex. This is an exclusive entrepreneurship reality TV show that has just come to be your teacher, to be your tutor. You know, he's saying that uh, when you're you know, looking for an entrepreneurship idea, don't ask an employee. You're asking your own person. So this show can be your fountain, can be your wellspring when it comes to some of the few technical, practical knowledge, information, data that you need to establish your company. We are here for you. We're interested in your idea, but remember an idea cannot just make it all alone. A couple of few things you need as a package to really stand on the surface. And again, it's not going to be simple. Um, we are encouraging you to start, to break the fear. Start in your early 20s before you reach in your 60s and you can't start anymore. But again, as we encourage you to start, we are not telling you that this is you know, a paradise. It's not a picnic. This is a hustle. And it's a battle. You can accept to lose a battle to win a war in the end. Of course, you reach a moment. I remember when I had no transport in my business. I was crying. I remember when I stayed, when I slept in the office, lacking transport. But again, I remember my mentor told me that, Frank, don't worry, don't quit. Always, the sun comes, you know, you know right after the down. So, you know, when, you know, I mean, the, the, the statement was like, uh, the darkest moment of the night is during the down. So down is when the dark is too much black. But the good thing is, it's also in the next one minute that the sunshine comes in. So sometimes you quit when it's in the down, when the sun is about to come. So stay in the game, lose the battle, win the war, and keep the courage. So, Henry, thank you so much. Thank you, boss. And, uh, yeah. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Yeah, it was nice it. having you. Nice to. Yeah.